Hey traders, so in this video, I'm going to talk about why am I not a big believer of candlestick pattern and um, for me personally, I'm a pattern based or context based price action trader, which means I care a lot more about price behavior and any particular price responses, any patterns of how price will react at key level, etc. You know, one of the biggest myth or one of the biggest beginner mistake is they overly emphasize on our candlestick pattern. And when when you hear the word candlestick pattern, you can sort of link it to what? Confirmation. And that's what beginner trader they love doing. Is they say, Oh, when price comes to this level or when price does XYZ, I would like to see a hammer forming, I would like to see a bearish pin bar, I would like to see a doji form then I'll be looking to trade the position. So to simplify this, candlestick pattern is nothing but merely what has happened within that specific time frame or timeline. So one candle, a one five minute candle, let's say it's forming a hammer, it basically just tell you within the five minute, there's sellers in control or there's buyers in control. So if price forms, let's say, an, an engulfing pattern, something that um, is so common on YouTube, they are not so reliable just because how common they are. All right, let's say you say, oh, I'm looking to buy at this $1 support if price forms a hammer. Then uh, you'll sort of use that hammer, um, the close of the candle as your entry and the stop loss under the, under the candle's low. Then a lot of times you actually realize that you get stopped out very often. So let's move into the chart and let me give all of you some example. So what does that mean by I'm more of a pattern based or context based trader? It basically just means for me, I care a lot more about how price reacts to specific key level, specific price point. That's, uh, that's my POI, that's my point, on it, point of interest. So if let's say, um, price uh, I'll just keep, let me find an example here uh, let's say price uh, comes into this level here assuming this is a support level and a lot of traders what they do is oh I wait for a price confirmation which is a bullish candle so they will do something like that then the stop loss under the low pushing all the way up again this is a winning example but what I'm trying to show you here is if you're someone who's um, paying too much attention to specific um, candle, candlestick kind of confirmation, you are actually neglecting what price is trying to tell you. All right. The main reason why people are losing money because they don't know how to put the right pattern or the right strategy into the right context. All right. Just a quick example. If let's say today price is doing this uh, in the middle of nowhere, let me just draw out for you because if I were to find example one by one, it, it will take a long time. So let's say price is doing this, is forming a larger range. But again, for traders who are on a lower time frame, they jump straight onto 5M, the 50 minute, they couldn't see this large range. Right, the price is in a bigger range, then all of a sudden in the middle of nowhere, we form a bullish pin bar. What most traders assume is, oh, price forms a pin bar, I'm looking to go long. It doesn't work that way. Market has cycle, and market has what we call seasonality. So by saying that taking your entry and trading patterns at the right context means you have actually specific strategy to tackle different market conditions. Like within my, the 1% of trade club, within my community, we have a few common strategies. Some of them were, uh, one of them is TPF, it could be rollover, it could be, it could be any, any patterns, right? I always tell them you can only make money uh, consistently from the market if you learn how to adapt to the ever-changing market condition. Because within a year, let's assume you got six months where we got trending kind of condition. You got three months where the market is ranging. You got another three months where the market is not moving anywhere it's just consolidating or if it's grinding into one direction or what we call a pro trend. How do you fit in different patterns into different contexts, into different market condition? That's your homework as a trader, all right? I couldn't care less, um, uh, I couldn't care less about candlestick patterns because they simply just tells you what happened within that one candle, that's it. 
and that's why within my trade club we don't even <laughs> talk about candlestick pattern what we often do is um, just a bit of um, um, sort of an insight here let's say when price is approaching one dollar mark let's say this this entire area is one dollar resistance so we will have specific patterns specific strategy to trade that to say oh we are looking for um, a, a, a possible rejection of the high one dollar and after price reacts there we want to see we want to actually monitor how price responds to the level so it could be uh, multiple uh, rejection candle it could be an exhaustion around the area it could be multiple failure to break the high it could be a false break above the high an immediate claim under the, the level so these are essentially what I like to do because again if you're only using one candlestick pattern to, to, to act as your confirmation then ultimately you don't have enough evidence but in inside our trade club I like to use the word evidence um, as opposed to confirmation so if you don't have enough evidence you are not trading with the higher probability of success right what you need to do as a trader mm. is to always take calculated risk uh, when you know this particular outcome is more probable to to occur right so another thing about candlestick pattern is it delays your entry because when people talk about oh if price forms a pin bar then you should be going long let's say okay let's say you know how to put the right candlestick as a confirmation at the right context that's one thing second thing is what if the candle is a little bit too big because every every strategy every patterns that I teach they have sort of um, um, a stop-loss distance because if it exceeds that that means um, either buyers or sellers are lacking of energy or you just don't it's just not worth it in terms of risk reward because risk reward is ultimately the most essential thing in my trading because just think about risk reward like when you're trying to invest in certain things so let's say today a potential uh, someone who's uh, who come approach you trying to sell you something well, let's say that's an that's a financial consultant uh, a financial whatever he comes to you and say hey if you invest uh, $10,000 into this particular project you can you have a potential to make 20,000 that's a one to two risk reward so 10,000 versus 20,000 20,000 dollars opportunity that's not bad but what if he, someone comes to you and say hey imagine this is an agent or this is um, a seller whatever you say hey I have something to sell you if you invest $10,000 into us you have the opportunity to get back five thousand dollars so right now the risk reward is a little bit uh, is unfavorable all right because it is now the risk reward becomes one to 0.5 one to one uh, one to zero point five so the same thing goes to candlestick pattern what people don't really tell you is also your, your stop loss placement so if let's say today uh, price does this uh, let's say we are on a uptrending condition you're looking to buy a deep retracement you're looking to buy the pullback price comes down tap from such a massive pin bar do you take it or not because if you place your entry there stop loss covering the low targeting at the high that might set you in a negative risk reward scenario and that's why again within my within our trade club the way I trade has always been focusing on the context has always been focusing on specific price responses the way price respond to a level is much more significant than just measuring or what one candle has done because again one candle can be nothing and if you do a back testing if you have been in the market long enough if you do a lot of homework you know that a lot of time candles stick they are unreliable a lot of times you see an engulfing guess what you get it get digested you get consumed sometimes you see a bullish pin bar just to see price get completely consumed but what's more important is what does that tell you let's say you saw a bullish pin bar so what's the information here what's the evidence here so what's the takeaway so if you can't answer this that means you are not you don't really know how to trade you are using things that you don't really know what's the logic behind it 
of course everyone would have said oh a bullish candle means our price comes into this level then buys push price up but then what the context is not there the, the, the logic is not there by saying that oh within that one candle buys does this then what you don't have enough evidence so another thing is when you're relying on candlestick pattern to enter into a position it often leads to a delay in your entry all right delays your entry and a lot of times it's just it's just uh it's just lead to you having a poorer price position over time if you keep relying on that as a confirmation so that's why we um uh, the way i trade has always been um Re seeing how price react to let's say I have a key level that I wanted to trade I want to see what price does around the area on a lower time it could be on a one minute it could be on a five minute it could be on a 50 minute what price really does are we holding above it are we having a multiple exhaustion signal or are we trying to squeeze the level if we're trying to squeeze the level that means it is not reliable anymore the pattern can be removed so after seeing that then we start measuring out oh, the potential risk reward again trading for me again I know some some people on on the YouTube space they probably don't care about risk reward but I care a lot about risk reward because trading for me is a business if I put on five thousand dollar risk how much can I potentially get back because the downside is always has always been protected because you have a max you have a stop loss in place you you are capping your maximum risk but what's the potential upside that's something that that's really important all right so i hope this video also enlightened some of you and sort of give you an aha moment to say hey you don't actually need candlestick pattern all right so your approach could be either you wait for price to come into specific level you wait for price responses you wait for specific patterns as a confirmation or you use limit order why a lot of the good traders they use limit order is because they know they they, they know their price position their position is much more is much more important to wait for that or specific confirmation right because when this when the confirmation appear it could be too late okay you could also debate that by being late also means it's safer not necessarily no matter what you do no matter if you wait for confirmation or not the probability of success of that particular trade is still nearly 50 50 it's always there all right unless you have such a heavy back testing to support that oh if i wait for price does this then i take the trade stop loss does covering the low i'll have an 80 percent win rate then that's fine all right so just make sure you know exactly what you're doing and yeah i'm also trying to share here why a lot of the a really good trader they are more price sensitive as opposed to waiting for a specific confirmation all right so that's it for the video um i hope all of you also learn something new um if you like the video please don't forget to like share and subscribe and i'll talk to you next time